The filibuster has received some attention this election, and if the Democrats win the presidency and both chambers in Congress, Democratic senators will feel pressure to get rid of the filibuster. To help explain how the filibuster affects policy, I want to introduce a basic model of policymaking. To simplify things, I'm going to focus on issues that can be put into a single dimension. For this video, I'll use the minimum wage as a running example. The minimum wage could be $6 an hour, $8 an hour, or any number between zero and infinity. I will assume that senators vote based on their preference. In this case, the man in the suit wants a minimum wage of $8 an hour, while the purple clad woman wants a minimum wage to be $14 an hour. SQ represents the status quo policy. In this example, the minimum wage is currently $6 an hour. If there were a bill to raise the minimum wage to $12 an hour, the woman at 14 would vote yes because 12 is closer to 14 than 6, and the man at 8 would vote no because 6 is closer to 8 than 12. While the Senate has 100 members, I am going to work with a 13-person legislature in order to illustrate how things work. Again, each legislator has a preferred outcome which I have marked on the screen. Let's say that the status quo is at 6, and there is a bill that changed the policy to 12. Notice that everyone who wants 9 or higher votes yes, and everyone who wants less than 9 votes no. For this video, I'm going to assume that the median voter of the legislature gets to decide what bills get voted on. In that simple case, without the filibuster, the outcome will always end up at what the median voter wants. For example, in this case, the median voter is going to propose a bill at 10 because that's their preferred outcome. The cut point would be at 13, and everyone below 13 would vote yes. Because the median voter is on the side of the cut point with the majority, the bill would pass and the outcome would be at 10. 10 would be the outcome in this case regardless of what the status quo is. Now let's introduce the filibuster. The filibuster is used in the US Senate for some measures, but not all. The filibuster allows a group to say that they want to continue the debate and effectively block a bill. Under the current Senate rule, 60% of the legislators can end a filibuster by voting for cloture. This means that a minority of 41 legislators can block a bill. I will use the letter F to indicate the preferences of the filibusters. For fun, the word filibuster comes from a 16th century word for pirates. So, I'll give our filibuster pivots some festive hats to match. Now, in a 13-person legislature like what you see here, a group of six can block a bill by using the filibuster. Notice that there is a filibuster on both sides of the ideological spectrum. Let's go through some examples. Let's start with an example where the status quo is at 4. The median voter would like to propose a bill at 12 if they can pass it. Let's see what happens if they do. In that case, the cut point would be at 8. The bill would not be filibustered. There are 5 people who don't want the bill passed, but the filibuster located at 10 wants it passed, and so there aren't enough votes to filibuster the proposal. The outcome would end up at 12. However, had the status quo been at 10, then the cut point would have been at 11, and there would be six senators who would filibuster the policy, keeping it where it is. Let's look at what would happen if the status quo policy were instead at 18. A proposal to change it to 12 would produce a cut point located at 15. This again would not pass because there are six legislators who would filibuster to block the change. However, the median voter doesn't have to propose 12 as the policy especially if they know it won't pass. In that case, they might instead propose a policy at 14. Now, the cut point would be at 16. In this case, the filibuster pivot located at 16 is indifferent, and so they would allow that bill to pass, and the outcome would be at 14. This is not the median voter's most preferred policy, but it is the best they can get, and they prefer it to the status quo, which is why they would propose a policy change to 14, which would pass. If the Democrats win control of both chambers of Congress and the presidency, they will want to move policies in a liberal direction. The filibuster will block some of these policy changes and cause other policies to end up with a more conservative outcome than the Democratic senators would prefer. Based on his voting record in the current Congress, Mitt Romney, or someone with a similar voting record, would be the vote needed to end a filibuster. Thus, Policies that are currently more conservative than what Mitt Romney wants would move in the liberal direction. However, policies that are already more liberal than Romney's preferred outcome would not change. 
This includes some policies that the Democratic primary voters would like to see changed. Those voters would likely put pressure on Democratic senators to get rid of the filibuster. And because the filibuster is an internal Senate rule and not part of the Constitution, senators have the power to get rid of it. For this reason, the filibuster will likely be an important story in 2021 if Democrats control the presidency and both chambers of Congress. That's it for this video. Stay informed and get involved.